Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. This laptop has the most powerful integrated graphics on the market right now. And in this video, we're going to see how it performs. So I'm actually really excited about this because I've been trying to get my hands on a device with the Ryzen 7 6800H for a little while now be it a handheld, a mini PC, or a laptop, and it just so happens that my local Best Buy had a few of these in stock. This is an ASUS Tough Gaming Laptop, and we've got that Ryzen 6800H. It also has an RTX 3050, but it's been totally disabled because personally, I'm more interested to see what these integrated graphics can do. I know the RTX 3050 is going to be more powerful, but when it comes down to this chip here, the 6800H, in a few months, we're going to be seeing this in mini PCs, and I really want to get a feel for how these little things are going to perform. When it comes to the Ryzen 6000 series APUs, we have a brand new iGPU based on RDNA 2. There's actually two of them out there. In the 6600U, you're going to get the 660M, but in the 6800U and up, we're going to get the 680M, and that's exactly what we're working with here. It's also paired up with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz. And real quick, I just want to show you the power consumption on this iGPU because these can really get up there. I mean, up into the 40 watt range, and for an iGPU, that's quite high, but luckily, we're actually able to set the TDP on this whole setup here at 80 watts. And when it's set up like this, we can get the maximum performance out of these integrated graphics, and they do an absolutely amazing job. So as you can see, it goes up to around 31 to 32 watts, but if I was to run something else that relied on the GPU, I've seen this jump up to 43 watts, and that's just on the 680M side of things. But either way you look at it, these are the fastest integrated graphics on the market right now, and I cannot wait until the mini PCs start releasing with this chip here. We're going to see the 6800U, the 6800H, which will give us better CPU performance, and the 6800HS in the next couple months. But for now, we can test this laptop out, and the first thing I did was run a couple benchmarks. I just went through 3D Mark here. And for Night Raid, we got a total score of 24,498. Firestrike came in with a 6,036, and finally, Time Spy with a 2,651. If this was a dedicated GPU, I wouldn't be impressed, but for integrated graphics, these scores are looking really good. In this video, we're going to test out a bunch of AAA games. But before we move any further, I did want to give you a quick reminder about Simply Nook's Dragon Canyon giveaway. So they've partnered up with Intel to give away a fully loaded Intel NUC 12 Extreme. It's the Dragon Canyon bundled with a cherry mouse and keyboard. And when it comes to these smaller form factor PCs, this thing is an absolute beast. It's got an Intel Core i9-12900 CPU, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and an EVGA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti. It's the XC3 graphics card, and this thing will basically run anything you throw at it. If you're not familiar with Simply Nook, they specialize in all things mini PC. From business applications to gaming PCs, they've been around since 2015 and their headquarters are located in Round Rock, Texas, so they're right here in the U.S. This giveaway is running from May 26th to June 3rd, 2022, and if you want to enter, all links are in the description. They're going to handle everything on their end. They're the only ones that are going to be contacting you about being a winner if you do end up winning this awesome mini PC. So real quick, if you're not familiar with the Ryzen 7 6800H, we've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.2 GHz with a boost up to 4.7. This is based on Zen 3 Plus, so we do get some really good single and multi-core performance out of the CPU side of things. But the main reason I really like these 6000 series mobile APUs is the built-in iGPU. So with the 6800U up to the 6800HX, we get the Radeon 680M. It's based on RDNA 2, we've got 12 CUs, and in this one here, the 6800H, it's running at 2200 MHz. Now pairing this up with DDR5 RAM really helps out, but at the time of making this video, the fastest RAM that I can find in these laptops with this chip is 4800 MHz. But it does support LPDDR5 up to 6400 MHz, so when we start seeing devices like that, it will give us a nice little GPU performance bump. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some testing. And keep in mind, we're running this at a very high wattage when it comes to these mobile APUs, but I want to get the max performance out of this GPU, so we're going to see what it does like this. The first one I wanted to test here was God of War, where at 1080p original settings with no FSR on. And remember, we've got this APU basically maxed out here. We're close to 80 watts, right now we're pulling up to 70, and that GPU can pull up to 43 watts by itself. We're only getting an average of 42 FPS, but this is a free sync display and it does feel a lot smoother. 
but I did want to see what we could do at 720p, so I went ahead and dropped it on down. So here it is, 720p, original settings, and I also turned FSR to performance. We can get an average of 71 FPS out of God of War. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, and I'm going to go into the settings here because it's running really well. Uh, from the graphics, I went to low and then I turned FSR to performance, so I'm not exactly sure what that turns on and off, but it's now saying custom. I'd say we're basically at low here with FSR set to performance, 1080p. In the past, it was basically impossible to run this game on any APU over 60, but by the end of this run, I had an average of 68 FPS. Checking out Forza Horizon 5, and this is one of those games that does work really well on lower end hardware. I've had really good luck with this on APUs, and this is definitely no different. We're at 1080p low settings, and I can get an average of 89 FPS out of it. And at medium settings, 1080p, we get an average of around 65 FPS, so playing this with V-Sync on is going to be the way to go if you want to go up to 1080p medium. But it's definitely possible to do on the 680M iGPU. Next on the list, we've got Control, 1080p, low settings, and with it set up like this, I have seen it dip below 60, so you might want to take that rendering resolution down, but Afterburner stated that I had an average of 62 FPS by the end of this run. Not bad at all, and it's perfectly playable. And again, since we've got this FreeSync monitor, we don't have any kind of screen tearing going on when it does drop below 60. I personally don't play Fortnite, but I did want to test it out here. We're at 1080p medium settings, and I didn't go to performance mode. I usually go to performance mode on these APUs, but I just left it kind of at the stock settings here, swapped it right over to the medium preset, and got an average of 87 FPS. Here's The Witcher 3 at 1080p, low settings. We got an average of 78 FPS, and this game still looks amazing at low settings. Got a couple stutters here and there, but I never saw it dip below 60 FPS. And finally, we've got Elden Ring, 1080p low, we get an average of 46 FPS with it set up like this. And at 720p, we still can't run this at a constant 60, it does dip down to the lower 50s. And that's really the way it goes with these APUs right now in this game. But you know, maybe in the future with driver updates to these RDNA 2 iGPUs and maybe some optimizations to the game itself, we could run this at 60. I don't think it's ever going to do it at 1080p low, but 720 may be possible down the road. So overall, the 6800H is a great performer with those built-in RDNA 2 graphics. It's not on par with a dedicated GPU, but that's not really the point of this video, or in my opinion, the point of this chip with the built-in graphics in the first place. Of course, we've got amazing CPU performance on this thing with those Zen 3 Plus cores, and pairing it up with a dedicated GPU does take it to a whole nother level. But these integrated graphics are absolutely amazing and the most powerful on the market right now. The 680M can definitely perform and we're going to see some mini PCs with the 6800H, the 6800U, the 6800HS, and even the 6600U. When it comes to handhelds, we'll be seeing the 6600U and the 6800U, but we're not going to be able to run those in a handheld at the wattage we saw in this video. Of course, taking the resolution down on like a built-in screen is really going to help out. And it's definitely going to offer a bump in performance over Vega, but I think where these little chips are going to shine are in mini PCs, because with that we don't have to worry about battery, and uh, with the correct cooling system we'll be able to take the wattage up and get really great performance out of the 680M.
But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this chip, just let me know in the comments below. And one video I have on the way is Linux running on the 6800H. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.